Hey, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're listening to WLFR 91.7 The Light. We're here with Kaleem Shabazz, who is the president of the Atlantic City chapter of the NAACP. And I know he's on a tight schedule, so we want to re definitely respect his time. Um, tell us why, uh, well, tell us about Project 2025, what that is, and why the NAACP has decided to take the step to oppose that. Okay. Project 2025, we believe, is a blueprint, uh, a guideline, a pathway for what a second Trump administration would look like. Uh, this is a document of over 900 pages where over 100 contributors have gotten together and written uh, uh, subject matter uh, plans, uh, programs uh, to deal with how government should take a uh, new direction in uh, a second Trump administration. A new direction giving the uh, president more powers, a new direction uh, giving more oversight to women's bodies, uh, a new direction in having a register of women who are pregnant uh, to make sure they don't have an abortion, uh, a new direction to uh, severely slash uh, Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security, a new direction to demolish the Department of Education, a, a new direction to severely uh, cut back on civil liberties and social justice initiatives within the federal government. Uh, we strongly uh, denounce that. Uh, former President Trump is trying to uh, back away from it. He says he doesn't know anything about it. He's never read it. But it's ironic, Brother Tyler, that uh, J.D. Vance, uh, Senator Vance, who was his vice president nominee, uh, wrote the foreword to that. And it's also ironic that many of the people who are contributors to the 900 and paid something paid document or have formerly served in the Trump administration. Uh, we believe firmly uh, that if President Trump is reelected, he will initiate that. At the National NACP convention in Las Vegas this summer, uh, there was a resolution uh, to denounce 2025, Project 2025, to make our membership and the general community aware of the pitfalls of this uh, project and it was unanimously approved uh, by the over 8,000 uh, delegates who were there, voting delegates from across the country, uh, as I said before, from the 2,200 uh, NACP units in this country, unanimously voted to condemn that. And we have been on a path uh, to announce that on our radio program, which is heard on another station from 4.30 to 5.30. The Hawks have been here. You can oh, tell can people about right, the... Uh... I'm in trouble. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, on WEHA, in fact, please tune in today if you can, uh, from 4.30 to 5.30, on WEHA 88.7 and 100.3 FM is uh, your NACP Speaks, sponsored by the Lansing Branch of the NACP, going into our fifth year, thank God. Uh, and we, we've been talking about 2025. We're going to continue to talk about that. 2025 is a blueprint for disaster uh, for working class people, for people of color, for women, uh, for senior citizens, for the overwhelming majority of American citizens. Uh, we denounce it, uh, we decry it, and we are going to make sure that people understand what it is, and not only what it is, how it would impact them if uh, it's initiated. There you go. Uh, he is uh, Kaleem Shabazz. He is the president of the uh, NAACP Atlantic City chapter, and we've been talking about Project 2025. Uh, we've been talking about uh, the incre increasing voter turnout in Atlantic City. Is there anything else that you'd like to add about uh, Project 2025 and uh, the steps that the NAACP are taking to combat that? I would tell people to read it, but I'm realistic enough to understand that people are not going to read 900 pages of anything. In fact, people might not read nine pages of it. Uh, I would suggest that they uh, uh, listen to uh, the NACP radio program. We're going to be talking about it each and every program. Uh, we've been doing it for the last two weeks up until the election. Uh, the NACP is going to be putting out uh, short summaries of what it, uh, it entails and how it impacts us. And uh, we're going to be making sure that people understand that it's something 
uh, that should not uh, be implemented in the United States uh, government uh, on Project 2025. Uh, all you have to do is to see, uh, in my mind it's very clear, to see how uh, former President Trump is running away from it. Uh, it shows uh, me that he knows how unpopular this is. He knows that when people read it or hear about it, uh, that they will be against it. And let me say, say this in, in, in conclusion. I am so glad to have the opportunity to come here today. I uh, wanted to really, again, underscore uh, the um, support we have for our Haitian sisters and brothers. Uh, I think this is really a dangerous, dangerous situation uh, that President Trump has encouraged, uh, uh, along with uh, Senator Vance. Uh, when you start talking about things that encourages violence, uh, that's no joke. Uh, that's not just politics as usual. That's something we must decry. So we stand again in, in unity with our Haitian sisters and brothers. Uh, we are steadfast on our goal to increase a voter turnout in Atlantic City and also to let people know the dangers of Project uh, 2025, not just for people of color. And let me just, uh, if I can conclude on that, it's not just for people of color. It's against women's reproductive rights across the board. All, all women uh, will be negatively impacted by 2025. Uh, against education. At the end of the NACP meeting, as you know, we had standing room only at the last meeting. There were several uh, young ladies who were teachers, and they said, in their professional opinion, that uh, uh, disbanding the Department of Education would have a disastrous effect on education, especially in urban communities. Uh, and I had sort of thought about it, but it sort of crystallized uh, itself when they said that. So I think that's something uh, that we should be against. If that was the only thing in it, obviously there are more things in it than Project 2025 for that. But I'm saying, um, in general, it is a bad, bad policy. It's bad, bad politics, and we should not stand for it.